Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toaster Bros, and today we're going to be building a $100 fully custom keyboard. We're getting into the custom keyboard game because, well, that's the popular thing to do nowadays. But before we get into that, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by, wait for it, GVG Mall, an online marketplace to gain access to some really awesome discounted game keys, and more specifically, Windows 10 licenses. So if you use the links in the description down below and type in code TB20 at checkout, you will get 20% off of your purchase. And activating Windows is as easy as actually buying the key. You literally just copy and paste it and then boom, your Windows is activated. Thanks again to GVG Mall for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to use the link in the description down below and TB20 at checkout. Now, let's go ahead and get into this video, shall we? All right, guys, so as you can tell, we have a bunch of stuff right here for this keyboard. This idea was actually inspired by our manager, Zach, who is a keyboard fanatic behind us. Uh, he's gonna be coming in here in a minute to explain this keyboard and the process, but this is a very easy to put together mechanical keyboard for someone who wants the customization of getting their own switches and things like that. Um, and yeah, we're very excited to see what it sounds like once it's all done. So this keyboard is going to be a very beginner based and very cheap keyboard build. So it's a 60%, which is really awesome because while well, a lot of the gamers out there like a very small compact keyboard, so they have a lot of room for their mice. So now I'm gonna have Zach actually explain what exactly we got here with this combo. So this keyboard right here is the GK61X. If you look, it has per switch RGB LEDs, which is pretty rare in a budget hot swap keyboard. And when we say hot swap, that means you can change the switches out as you like. So let's say you have this keyboard completely built with, you know, cherry red switches and you want to try out cherry blue, you can just pull them out, put in cherry blue switches without soldering anything. It's completely hands-free in terms of soldering. And for the switches we decided to actually use for this keyboard, we have a lot here because, well, we bought them in bulk and we had Zach actually lube them up. You want to explain what they are? So these are Gatoron yellow switches. These are a linear switch with 50 gram actuation and four millimeter travel. Another thing to note is that it does come with a really nice USB type C braided cable. This is USB type C connection, which is really nice over micro USB. USB. So these are pudding keycaps. If you look, they have the uh, cherry profiling, then transparent side, so the RGB backlighting per key on this GK61 can shine through this side and also the legend on top. Okay, so for a switch, there is four major pieces to it. You have the bottom housing, the top housing, the spring, and the stem. And the click. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what the switch built looks like. This is it deconstructed. And then to reconstruct it, it's as simple as it's as simple as putting the spring on the middle platform, sliding in the stem, and then taking the top housing, sliding it over, and then just clicking it shut. So, lubing is a very long process. You can do it quick and easy, but it's better to have more consistency. If you take your time with it, you're going to have more consistent feeling across the keys. So, to lube switches, First, you deconstruct the switch. For the springs, I did something a little bit different. I went ahead and bag lubed the springs. So I put all the springs in this bag. As you can see, there's only two in here because we did this beforehand. You put some oil in the bag. I used Hops gun oil, and then I just kind of shook the bag a little bit, let it sit overnight, shook it some more, and then the springs were lubed. Everything was applied perfectly. The next step is to lube the housing. So if you look in the housing, there's slider rails on the left and right side. And that's the only part of the bottom housing that you're gonna wanna lube. So you just wanna take your brush, you're gonna wanna get your lube, you would dip it in, and then you just lube the side housings like this. Next, you would put your spring in place and you would take your stem. So on the stem, this is the side that goes into the slider housing and then these are the contact points for the leaf. So when these contact points actuate on the leaf, that's how you get your keystroke. So on this, you're gonna to wanna to lube the side that goes in the slider housings. And if you can, or if you want, you can lube also the contact points. When you do that, it gives it a lot less resistance. And this is not recommended on tactile switches because it would kill the tactile bump. But for linears, it's okay if you want to. I chose not to and only did the sides. And just real quick also, the lube we used for this was Crytox 205 GO. There's lots of different keyboard lubes out there. This is just the one we chose. So now I think there's only one thing left to do, and that is to fully put together this modular keyboard, which should be pretty quick and easy.
So on a software side of things, we did have a little bit of trouble getting this Skylong keyboard actually working. So it was not plug and play for some reason. They typically are and should be, but we actually had to download the drivers, which we will have in the links in the description down below. So the drivers just absolutely suck. They get the keyboard up and running, but do not try to do any RGB stuff on it because it'll just make you cry. However, if you just use FN and brackets, you can actually change the RGB and do some other modes as well. So one thing to keep in mind from the typing test, as you may have heard, the stabilizers are a bit rattly. They're not the best, they're not the highest quality. We did buy some other stabilizers to try and swap them out. But one thing we did not know when we bought this keyboard is that the stabilizers are plate mount. You cannot use PCB mount stabilizers, which are the most common stabilizers out there. So if you're gonna swap them out, you should try plate mount. And even then, I don't know if it's gonna work. They do use proprietary stabilizers. So while this is a hot swap keyboard as well, you do need to be careful when putting in the switches. If you shove the switches in too hard, if you're too forceful, you don't check for bent pins before putting them in, you're just gonna bend the pins on your switches. You could break the pins, you'd have to fix them. It's just a lot of hassle. Just be safe and gentle with it. One thing to keep in mind as well is that the RGB is not super bright on our keyboard because the actual switch housing on the bottom is blacked out. So there's really not a whole lot of light to be able to shine through on the actual switch itself. If you are a fiend for RGB, you could use some different switches with milky transparent housing or better LED cutouts, but if you're more of a fan of the feel and the sound, maybe you should just rock these Gator on yellows. So overall, for this keyboard being around $100, it does feel and type and honestly do everything really well besides the RGB portion of it. And hopefully if you guys decide to build it, it just works plug and play right away. But don't forget to check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toasty bros. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs> I no, we both okay, point I was, I was gonna see Why do we both point up? For like, I didn't point up. I was like this. <laughs> I, was I, like, I know. I know.